things I've learned over the last few weeks. I'm not as good at being alone as I thought I was. I really missed my dog. An expo was bearing down on us and for the first time he wouldn't be coming. And although the back seat was still there, it was filled with gear rather than Zeus. All right, gang. <clears throat> so, uh, this is the last day that we're here. As you can see, we've got the shop almost cleared out. We've got one more to do. We do have a little bit of work to do on the mechanism for this guy. I want to show you a little bit about what that's like, but we have to leave for Expo tomorrow. We have to start driving up and get everything set up for Friday so that um, when people arrive, things can actually get done. Welcome to Blind Man Outdoors. I'm Dave, and I've been exploring my whole life, from my hometown in the Blind Man River Valley to the jungles of South America. Four years ago, I left an old life behind to chase a passion full time. Now, I built Canada's Yucapac Camper and the Alberta Outdoor Adventure Expo, all while continuing to explore and experience the great outdoors. You see, I believe we're called to live free and be wild. And if you do too, then this is the place for you. There's no two ways about it. Expo this year feels a lot different. I didn't have Zeus in the back seat. I had some new friends that I was bringing along. And with the struggles and challenges I found with Blind Man Overland and the building of the campers and trying to innovate, I did have to rely heavily on yeah. Courtney, Joy, and Jay to carry the brunt Courtney's of the planning for Expo. Out of any of and if it wasn't for these three people, <laughs> this Expo wouldn't actually even exist. And so I really want to acknowledge that without them, um, it wouldn't be possible. And I do appreciate uh, creating space and holding space so that I could figure things out on my other business while I rely on my team to do what they need to do best. Thanks for coming out, man. We're stoked to have you guys back. Hey, man, explore. Make it up as you go, brother. Map it out, dog. All right, well, with sun setting, it took no time at all until it ducked between the trees and it was dark. So we grabbed the Jeeps and the trucks with all the lights. We pulled them up in a circle and we got together and started working on the tents. And uh, many hands make light work here. So it was great to have the majority of the volunteers here the night before so we could get these things set up and uh, ready to be used first thing in the morning. We had a lot of courses planned this year. We had a very stacked schedule with awesome, incredible instructors. And this was gonna be the home for all of it. We had two of these to set up. And once we had all the pieces and everything organized, it really took no time at all. I think we had two tents set up in a matter of minutes. And then uh, we were gonna turn in for the night because tomorrow was gonna be a very big day. Our first task this morning was obvious. We had to get the obstacle course that ARC Off-Road wanted to use and make sure that it was actually ready to use for some of the lesser capable off-road vehicles that we were expecting to see at Expo. We do draw a large amount of people who are new to the sport and that's why we offer a lot of the classes and segments that we do is to give people a little bit more control and a lot more confidence when they're navigating the backcountry with the vehicles and the gear that they already have. Yeah. All right, guys, and like that, Expo is underway. Coming down passenger, yeah. The crazy thing about this event is that despite the best efforts we put in when the event actually happens to film a bunch of stuff and to get so much content for YouTube, what ends up happening is there's just so much going on and there's so many people through here. Like we draw hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people every year to this show. And it is absolutely incredible. The vendors that show up are awesome. The instructors that hold the classes are awesome. Um, there's no shortage of something to do here. Even if you just wanna keep away from the crowds and play a game 
of giant Jenga or cornhole, you can do that. Or take in one of the one of the, like we had three food trucks this year, and uh, all of the food was incredible. And then of course you've got the awesome vendor area where we had the Yuka Pack booth. And uh, we were right beside Arcto Trailers as well and Armor Light, two amazing Canadian companies. There was no shortage of epic gear to see at the AO Expo this year. Awesome course to take. You could have built a fishing tackle. You could learn invasive species. So many resources and awesome things to see here, guys. It was absolutely incredible. But as it happens every year, we didn't get enough content to show you the true uh, size and epicness of Expo this year on YouTube just because there's so much going on. And like in, in like a hurricane and out like a lion or whatever you say, but... It wasn't long until the last morning of Expo was here and everybody was packing up and uh, everybody was saying yeah, their goodbyes. It happens that quick, guys. It is such an event and absolutely incredible. I recommend you guys search YouTube for other videos about Expo that other amazing content creators have done as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how it goes. All right, guys, and just like that, <clears throat> I'm just vlogging. Just like that, the uh, fourth annual AOA Expo is complete. I really want to say thanks for everything from everybody. It's uh, it's really hard to put these things on when you're doing so much other stuff at the same time. And uh, without the vendors and the people that come out to these things and show up and do really cool things, it's, it's really cool that we got to see a lot of our subscribers this year too. So if you were here, Drop down in the comments there and uh, let us know. If you like doing this kind of stuff, if you like being in the outdoors, if you like fishing, hiking, climbing, so much of what this is about on our channel, on Jason's channel at the expo, is about bringing people together and uh, creating a space where, uh, regardless of your background, you can kind of come enjoy the great outdoors. So, hey, have a great one. See you. Well, Expo might be done, but this video is not. We continue our adventure after this. guys we are back and uh, we are actually just down the road from the AOA Expo we pulled off here on the side of the road on our way home to do a little camp uh, do a little dangling so we got our Daiwa we got a brand new Laguna <clears throat> I've actually had my eyes on this rod and reel combo for a long time it's a pretty standard reel it's just a sweep fire 2002 B very inexpensive the rod is probably about a I don't know a hundred dollar rod maybe and the reel is about a $30 reel, so kind of a weird combo, but it's one that I like quite a bit. And we're just here fishing this section of the river. It gets really fast up there where the where the tip where the space changes. And here we're kind of fishing this confluence here. So let's see if we can get on some fish and uh, go from there. We're actually using one of the lures that we made at the Alberta Outdoor Adventure Expo this year, uh, the AOAE. So this is just a silver spoon with a gold body and a pin. And we're using this guy uh, to fish this river. So let's see if we can catch a fish. This section of water sure does look fishy, doesn't it? Which means we're fine getting a little wet. You can definitely feel the season change.
All right, guys, well, no fish today. That's okay, because for the first time in five days, I had at least an hour to just sit in silence by a river, <clears throat> reflect, contemplate. I do love Expo, but I'll tell you something. I've got a confession to make. I am an introvert. And my battery, albeit a decent consumption, gets drawn down pretty quick after a full weekend of fun and chatting and hanging out and visiting. So I'm very much looking forward to some time off. No, oh, Mr. Wasp, not for you, for you, not for you. So there you go, that is a blind man witch. And how did you come up with the ingredients, you say? Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> well, you'd be on the road. We've been on the road. <laughs> We've been on the road now for close to a week. And uh, you kind of just go through your, your fridge because we're kind of at the end of the trip. Mm -hmm. You kind of just go through your fridge at the end of your trip and you make meals based on what you got left so i had quite a bit of meat left thanks to my fridge uh shout out to the fridge because usually it's before i had that thing man it was the opposite way i know you never have any like i'd meat. never have any meat i'd always have to throw it out so shout out to the fridge that's an lp cool fridge um and since i've done the solar upgrade to the truck i have had no issues and i'm running 100 watts of solar i charge all of my content creation stuff I run a fridge full time and in the winter I can even run my diesel heater. Um, that's a hundred watt panel and a hundred watts of lithium. So simple, effective and gets the job done. But what time is it now? It's almost, it's almost three o'clock. Yeah. It's gonna be a perfect time to get on the water. But before we do that, let's see what the first bite's like. Still good. This one's still probably gonna be pretty, pretty hot. Oh, yeah, I cheated. I was already one bite in. It was too good. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. I like how you can actually taste the individual meats in there. Yeah. Like they're all good. Mm, they're all in there. Cool. The hornets are bad here, too. They were also bad at Expo. No hornets that brazzy. Man, that's like a full meal in one bite. Yeah, we're good to sit on the water till eight nine it's good thing there's a bathroom down. nearby yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> i don't use rack sites too often well now we're playing with some new rods today uh, len thompson one of the world's most renowned lure manufacturers is out of my hometown in lacombe alberta and they come out for us in a big way during expo <clears throat> and this year they helped sponsor our trout pond yet again by uh, hooking us up with some beautiful Eagle Claw rods. Now this is um, this is one of their more premium rods, and we're gonna actually test it out today out on the water. And for you guys wondering, this is the Eagle Claw CG6MS2C. And it is a medium rod, and they're calling for about two to six pound line on it. So there's no right or wrong way to do this, but I like actually feeding it through my top eyelet first. I'm stringing the rod at the same time as I'm spooling up a new spool. It's a six pound mono line that I actually saw at my local dollar store. And so what I do is I'm gonna come around my barrel, I'm gonna give it a few wraps, and then I'm just gonna tie an overhand knot. <clears throat> All right, we're just gonna cinch that down like that. <clears throat> Grab your multi-tool, clip off that little tag that you got. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab our spool. We're gonna grab some sort of pin or something like that. We're gonna put it in the spool so that it can spin. 
And we're gonna find a hole. In this case on the boat, it's gonna be right there. And we're gonna put a little bit of tension on it. We're gonna close our, close our bail. Put a little bit of tension on it using our finger. And we're just gonna start to wind. Now you just reel. You just reel until it's full. Fish certainly seem to be there, but uh, it seems like they're all perch. Perch don't want to bite what we're chucking. I said we go in there and drift. That line? Yeah. I think we're in prime time for biting. Nope, that's weeds. <laughs> Is it actually? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely eating good tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Nice. There you go, buddy. Wow. I was tangled up too. Yeah. That's a nice size. Not bad. It's definitely a. Uh... It definitely wouldn't be bad. It's not too girthy, but that's a fun little fish to catch for sure. Yeah. Right up inside there, on top of that, you see that little blood mark there? That's right where that hook went right into, and that is a beautiful, beautiful catch. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh, and there he goes. Well. One bike and that's it. Sucks. Now we go make a fire and some steak. <laughs> I'm getting out. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stand.